What's up gamers, Rich here from Filling in the Gaps. Welcome to another episode where me and Cam cover D&D tips and tricks that will inspire you to run your next game night. Make sure you like and hit that subscribe button, smash the bell, smash it again, one more smash, another smash, and then share it with your grandma. Uh, my name is Rich from Ohio, joined by Cameron from the <laughs> biggest and baddest state of Texas. And we're here to share with you five tips on how to give you the great Greatest D&D night you've ever had. Rich with number one. <laughs> number one. Number Burger one. King one, foot one. Lettuce. <laughs> you might not want any Burger King lettuce in your burger, but it turns out that might be what you get. Sorry, that's a bad meme. That's a very unfresh meme, but wow, that was an what intro. What the hell? What the hell <laughs> meme was that? I've never heard of you've that You've never meme heard before. the Burger King? Hey, if you've heard the Burger King foot lettuce meme, go ahead and join the Discord. Join us at Filling in the Gaps on Discord. Uh, oh, you're pandering. Cam- <laughs> no, he's pandering. Don't pander. Don't, don't encourage his terrible attitude. Get down. All right. Okay, so, go. okay, if you guys, if, no, this, Cam, this is the episode. We're keeping this. If you guys. No, I know. I know. I'm ready. <laughs> if I'm you here. guys are new to Filling the Gaps, Hi. How are you? Uh, my name is Rich. This is Cam. We're not an actual play podcast, uh, but what we do every week on Filling the Gaps is we get together. Uh, we're just two friends living a thousand miles apart who like D&D and love sharing our ideas with each other. So we're going to be rolling two D20s here in the next few minutes, and we're going to mash together a story. We might get Candyland Zombie Apocalypse. We might get pirates who are also in a musical. We might get kobolds who are trying to have a bio war against the w- local town. We don't know what's going to happen, but we're going to brainstorm. We're going to turn it into something, hopefully, so you can steal it. And even if you don't yeah. steal the whole thing, you can just steal a little piece. And even if you yeah. don't like it at all, I, I mean, just just tell us that you think we did a good job, okay? Because because yeah. we're because we're hungry for for we base all of our our <laughs> happiness, all of our happiness, all of our joy comes from not from our other friendship. people. Yeah, yeah, not it's, from it's each other. other people. Like mm-hmm. acknowledgement, not from your marriage. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> lie to us. Uh, we need you to lie to us. Like even yeah. if it's awful, just mm-hmm. say like, "God, you're so great, guys." Give us the eye roll, and then just fade away. Yeah. Don't listen to any more episodes. Yeah, and if you want to join know. a great community of people who just lie to each other, uh, just mm-hmm. just well, you just hop on the Discord because we're just yeah. a great community who loves telling riddles. Whole, bunch of, whole and- bunch of liars over there. Just tons of liars. <laughs> Every single one of them lying to our faces. <laughs> Pretty I much. know. I, I I see. I see what you've been doing, and I'm <laughs> I'm I'm done. I'm done with this. You know what else though? I'm done with this intro. You know what else? I'm not done with this next question. I'm about to ask you. <laughs> you, <laughs> hey Rich. Yeah. What what's up? What's up? Shall we roll? Let's do it. Let's do it. Also, man, I I I'm so excited for this roll. I feel like we haven't done a, an episode in almost like two weeks. Uh, today, yeah. I'm rolling for the monsters, right? And you're rolling for. Our, uh, our either theme or scenario? Yes. Okay, let's go ahead and do this. We've added some new monsters to the list just today because of some people hollering at us on Discord. So we'll see what comes up. And... That's cool. A three. Ooh. Mine was a 14. A 14. I will figure out what these are brought... Or I will figure out what these are. You'll tell us what they're brought to us by. I know exactly who these are brought to us by. Hey. Hey, you. Psst. Yeah, you, lean in. Hey, turn up your car. You want some cool dice? You want some really cool dice? You want some cool dice sent to your door? To your mailbox every month? You should check out LibrisArcanaDice.com. They sell great dice at an affordable rate. And if you use the promo code FITG, you'll get 25% off your first order. You could order three sets of dice to come to your door every month and get 25% off the first three months. That's twenty five percent off three sets of dice. Psh, that's a great. That's a great deal. You should check them out. Tell them we sent you, and uh, and yeah, check them out. Now you can turn your your mic down a little bit. Um, you can lean back because I'm gonna take it back to Cam, and he's kind of a loud guy. So, cool. Wink, wink. What's no, that no. supposed to mean? What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> you're just you're just so vivacious, Cam. You're, is that I'm the correct? Vivacious is that the correct and word? Curvaceous. Ooh, yeah. mm, I'm both of them at the mm, same time. Speaking of something <clears throat> vivacious and curvy, why don't you tell us what our uh, episode is going to be about today? <laughs> oh man, this episode. Uh, first off, this is a uh, both of these were brought to us by Joel, a longtime friend of the show. Uh, Joel, love you. Uh, I think we finally got your name figured out. Like, I think we've got it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So, Joel. Uh, anyways, uh, we have either the theme of a poison-filled 
or empty battlefield. Mm. Uh, so like a post war bunch of dead bodies very uh like very what's what's that game the witcher i feel like it feels like yeah the witcher. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. very much the witcher um or hunting a monster uh which this is pretty interesting so let's figure out what uh you rolled a three right i rolled a three hmm man oh man it's been a while since i've ran one of those guys uh that's a nothic what, what a is, nothic i don't even know what a nothic is what are you talking about man, okay so I'll, I'll i'll tell you what a nothic is before we uh transition to our reading portion of the show reading with cameron and rich um reading a nothic is is like a old i think it's like an old wizard that became so obsessed with magic and magical things mm-hmm. that it became consumed by it and became sort of like a monstrous form of itself a nothic is one of the first more challenging monsters within the lost minds of fandelver um uh like a D adventure so, so do they live yeah, in caves besides, do they live in like dark damp places and stuff like that but you know what we need to do let's go read and then we'll be right back okay see you guys after this cameron and rich will be right back they're enjoying some reading time together as friends you know like silently reading in the same room together friendship all right rich Looks like we're about to get back on the road. Yeah, Cam, just like old times. Start up the car, and then put it in the fifth gear. (laughs) Roll out, roll out, you roll out, and then I roll out. Leaf C4 in the car, flies off the cliff. Boom! Welcome back to the episode. Yeah, we just read some books and some internet articles. We're informed with knowledge and ready to go to the max. Sorry, also, that was, uh... I have insurance on that car, so <laughs> don't don't tell anybody about this don't, 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 at all. Just be our little secret. Okay, speaking Me and of, you. Speaking of secrets, there's the transition. Speaking of secrets, uh, so no thicks, no thicks, no thick because they're actually pretty thin. Um, mm-hmm. They're they're interesting creatures. <laughs> Um, they're Cam. You actually ran with them in the Lost Minds of uh, Fandelver because uh, you ran that. A few months ago maybe so why don't you Uh take the lead kind of tell us a little bit about uh the no thickness guys um no curves whatsoever uh incredibly um flat assed if Mm -hmm. you will Mm -hmm. um but uh so anothic is is like a wizard that was instead of cursed with godlyhood and and sort of like all-knowing power um their their desire for the knowledge of of magic in the world um, led them down a deep and dark path uh, to the point of where they were actually um, cursed by Vecna himself uh, and left to sort of always be searching for this just like undying sense of knowledge. They just continuously want more and more and more knowledge. Uh, There's like a natural inclination for them to consistently be searching for that. Um, It's almost like a subliminal thought. Um, Some of the Nothics are aware that that's actually just a ruse and that their their current plight is unchangeable. But some of them truly have this unconscious thought that that will solve this plight and return them back to their regular wizardry ways. And so um, they, instead of liking to fight, are generally more apt to um, to essentially gather information, stalk uh, individuals, and they will um, do everything they can to run away from a fight. They hate fighting for the most part um, and are just more or less just trying to gather as much arcane information as possible Mm -hmm. uh they also speak telepathically as well yeah um and they generally have some information based off of players secrets which can be really fun for uh you as the dm because that's the weird that's the weird insight feature right like every mm -hmm. nothic has uh has a essentially an ability called weird insight um if the nothic can see one creature not if the creature can see the nothic there's no eye contact uh, if the Nothic can see the creature within 30 feet, the target must make a the uh, must make a let's see the target must contest its charisma check against the Nothic's wisdom check. If the Nothic wins the check, the competition, um, it magically learns one fact or secret about the target. 
the target automatically wins if it is immune to being charmed. Uh, and Nothics 2 have a plus 3, or they have a plus 2 to perception, and a plus 5 to stealth. So you're thinking, cool, they hide in the shadows, and they communicate telepathically. Mm -hmm. But it also has a plus 3 to arcana, and a plus 4 to insight. So these guys aren't necessarily creatures that are just looking for a fight. They're looking for this interaction. They're looking for knowledge. They're looking for secrets. They're built not as creatures to fight, but as creatures to manipulate and to steal knowledge from and to continue to collect this arcane knowledge, even if they don't know why or how or what to do with it anymore. They're just driven by this desire to get more. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm a, I am I like that. Uh, also, one other thing I uh, forgot to mention was that they also uh, are generally solitary by themselves. Yes. They spend time alone. Yes. Well, um, well they won't spend time with other Nothics. Like, they mm -hmm. won't be around other Nothics, but they want to be around other sentient creatures so they can continue just to, like, peer at them and to and to get this information, to continue to collect and to have this this just desiring information and then to communicate back telepathically these these whispers and these these gnawing facts about them to kind of tear the person up inside. One of the ways that I ran them when running LMOP was um, I, as my players entered into the basement, they had actually gained a secret that allowed for them to get into the basement secret, of this secret. manor. And, um, the, and when they entered into the basement of the manor itself, the Nothic resides there. Mm -hmm. And um, I started by essentially as they were sort of exploring this pretty empty area introducing whispers into their minds that only individuals could hear um and then asking them to make those checks essentially um and consistent i pumped up his per, his uh stealth essentially to mm -hmm. make it to where uh he was hard to find but at the same time uh sooner or later I revealed him and but used him almost more as like an npc as opposed to a combat encounter yeah. Which, which I feel uh, like that's how you want to use them. Yeah, I would definitely say so. It's a lot better that way because I, I mean, it just plays into that style of character, and they're they're you know what they're like? They're very Schmeagel like. That's exactly what I was thinking, dude. Yeah, like they they have this unnatural desire for an item they don't have anymore, and it just drives them to to constantly be around magic and to crave mm -hmm. magic, almost like a Schmeagel, like like a heroin addict wanting this thing that they used to have. Uh, just wanting more of it, but they can't. They can't. <laughs> yeah. They're not. They don't have any spell casting abilities unless you want to oh, give wait, them hold some. On. In the monster manual, it says down here, um, addicted to heavy drugs as well. Uh, That's no just kind of how they feel to me. They yeah, feel they like, love heroin and mm -hmm. cocaine and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff too. So, but I just feel it's like just, they're it's, that it's way. It's in the book. Magic. So That's, it is. It's written right here. It's written right here. Yeah. Um, so now you said that you had an idea while we were reading, by the way, and. Um, I uh, I want to hear that, but Man. first off, tell me which one of the two that you would like to pick. Oh, that's right, because we pick between the two. I would say hunting let's, a monster or poison field. Let's do poison field slash cursed battlefield. Okay. Um, okay. Because this is this is my thought. This is kind of what I see. I, well, actually, I have a few of I, a few ideas now for how I could run a Nothic. But first, I want to paint the picture for those of you who are driving in your car and you can't necessarily look at what a Nothic looks like. This is a Nothic. Uh, imagine a humanoid, a humanoid creature with large, bony, scaly hands uh, and talon-like feet. Uh, their head, uh, the center of their head, is now one giant, uh, a luminescent green eye with a bony almost demon-like mouth below with, with pointed, jaggy teeth that sit on top of each other. Uh, its neck shoots out like a, almost like a, like a large worm head out of the top of its body. Uh, its body is gray and bony, and sharp, stone-like protrusions shoot up its arms and down its back. It looks like a straight, uh, just abomination of a creature, but it still has this cunning intelligence. Um, and this this want for magic and and I was even wondering I, I couldn't find anything about it but I'm sure it's somewhere. Um, so in the monsters manual it it says that these things have been cursed by Vecna um, and that's turned them into this this Nothic state uh, and the mm -hmm. Nothics have this green illuminescent eye and then the dungeon master uh, dungeon master's guide I'm looking at the eye and hand of Vecna and guess what Vecna's eye is green. And I'm wondering if there's even this, this sense that in trying to ascend, which that's Vecna's story, he tried to ascend and he failed and now he's stuck in this middle ground. What if they're continuing to chase down these secrets and they're trying to follow after Vecna? 
uh, and Vecna's left these traps and these these potholes that if you if you trace so far, if you try to, to maybe acquire this eye of Vecna, maybe there's mm-hmm. something that happens that if you're not ready for it, if you're not strong enough for it, or if you don't do the right thing, it, it turns you into a, a Nothic. Um, I don't think that affects necessarily the Nothic you would run in this game, because uh, Nothics wouldn't necessarily remember what changed them. Um, right. I just think it's an interesting flavor. Right. No, it definitely is. Sort um, of like a, it could be like the background, maybe this uh, cursed battlefield. Um, well, but before I get going on this, because I, you have the idea, and I want to hear your idea. Okay, um, this this is my idea. Um, so you're you're sent to this battlefield for some reason. Uh, maybe you have to acquire an item that was lost in the battlefield, or maybe somebody met, went missing, like a kid, or or somebody went missing near this battlefield during a fight, and you're wondering if if they if they somehow got killed on accident, or you're looking for a necklace that used to belong to some wife's husband. What for whatever reason you're on this battlefield, uh, the Nothic is there, and because it watched this battlefield. And it absorbed all these people's secrets. It absorbed all these people's uh, uh, weird facts and, and hidden hidden lore about them. And as you're walking through this battlefield, somehow this Nothic can get around. And it learns secrets about you too, but I think it, it starts torturing the party by almost playing out the thoughts and the memories and the, the regrets of these dead soldiers in the minds of the players like as they're walking through and as they look down at the ground they hear like they hear just the soldier's memory saying something like i never got to tell her about about what i did or or i like i'm gonna die not not being able to like share the secret or i hope my family can atone for the fact that this this." and he's just going through and kind of sharing everybody's like garbage and your players just like holy crap this 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 field is haunted um and it's really just this Nothic talking to you, and then eventually the Nothic kind of twists it and makes it seem like these these dead uh, these dead soldiers also are able to like communicate and ha- kind of read the players' mail, and the Nothics are like uh, the Nothics using this knowledge to make the players feel the sense of of dread and unable to escapeness of like that they're also now cursed or that they have to do something with this knowledge now. Um, and the Nothic is just continually like watching this whole ordeal, seeing how they interact. Kind of like uh, I was reading earlier today because Matthew Coville did an episode recently talking about the AI that's plugged into like YouTube um, and like the AI kind of thought mapping and thought painting and stuff like that and how they'll just kind of let these programs go wild and watch whatever they want in YouTube and then kind of ask them questions to see how, how they interpret the knowledge. Look it up. It's really interesting stuff. Um, and then they'll say like, "Hey, what does a cat look like?" And the computer program will kind of digitally map out what it thinks a cat looks like, and they're just letting this thing go to collect knowledge. Like it, it, it's just the program's job is to collect knowledge. I think in the same way, that's kind of what a Nothic is is kind of reduced to. It's not a personality. It's like Vecna's Vecna's version. Exactly. Of, uh, I wonder. Let me ask you. Let's think about this for a second. Actually, okay. Do you think? That there is some kind of in- eternal connection between the eye I would and love Vecna to. himself. I would love to say that. Here, here's actually, yeah. I looked up what spells you get from the eye if you if you tune to it. Uh, you get the spells Clairvoyance, Crown of Madness, Disintegrate, Dominate Monster, and Eye Bite. Dude, what if... Eye Bite. It's like a, yeah, essentially it's like a, <laughs> it's like a, wor- a worse version of... Uh, the Nothics have an ability called Rotting Gaze. If it looks at you mm-hmm. and you fail a constitution saving throw and you're 30 feet away, you take 10 necrotic damage. Eye Bite's just that, but, like, way worse. Okay, so, you say that. I like this idea. Players are on a poison battlefield. Um, I like, also, to be... What about this? Yeah, pitch the me your idea. is... The Anothic is um, these. This is a long forgotten battlefield. Mm-hmm. I would say. Oh, really old? Okay. Gotcha. Not like Not a fresh long, one. long, but like you know, fifty years, okay, forty years, something like that. My thought is this: the Anothic is cursed not only with this desire for magical items and magical sources and secrets and things to that nature, but he's cursed to search his own battlefield. Um, and so maybe back in the day on this battlefield, there was a major battle, uh, 
sort of over the control of the Eye of Vecna. And once the wizard that had the desire to control the Vecna, the Eye of Vecna, um, once they got a hold of it, they were cursed, and everybody on the battlefield was also like killed, maybe in like an ensuing explosion or something like that. Mm. And so, I like the idea of also sort of telling the backstory of this wizard, um, that turned into this Nothic through the stories, uh, the, through the secrets of the dead in the battlefield. See, and that's what I was thinking too. Is man, I wish we weren't tied to a battlefield on this one. Um, you what? What'd you say? I, I said I wish we weren't tied to a battlefield because I'd love, I'd love if this Nothic, like, instead of you seeing it as just this bony, un- unworldly looking creature with reddish veins kind of pulsing through, like through its body, instead of looking at it saying like that's evil, like you looking at this thing and and it's still having patches of ro- very like Hulk like. Like patches of robes that's still over it that are dirty, yeah. Like, or like t- torn and and uh, over, sort of like laying over the spikes coming out of its back. Yeah, the spikes are shooting through the cloth, and some of the cloth it's like held in place by its its weird bony transformation and growth. Like it's almost like stuck in this mm-hmm. in this uniform. And I even thought too, like uh, I think I I got this off of a quick article you're reading. Um, the idea that Nothics, depending on what magic they're close to. Maybe they can still, if you're willing to up the difficulty, they're only challenge level two. What if this Nothic used to be some powerful illusion mage or powerful... That's, oh, I, oh, dude, yes, 100%. And then using the the secrets and the illusions to create and manifest um, combat encounters for the players, mm-hmm. right? Is that what you're thinking? Yep. And, and okay. see, this is especially useful for me. I, I feel a little guilty because I Vecna plays a big role in my current campaign. Uh, he's not the big bad evil guy, but he's like the, the you know, there's the if you're watching a TV show, there's the main plot and then there's the subplot that's kind of always there to fill in. Uh, Vecna's gaps. Vecna, ooh, we did it, ladies and gentlemen, we did it, we said it. Uh, sorry, <laughs> but but Vecna's <laughs> kind of there as my as my filler. Like he's always kind of been watching the players and he's always trying to grasp for power when he can. And the players have gotten close enough to Vecna that they they can kind of see him in ways that other normal NPCs can't. Um, So for me, I'm like, ooh, I could totally use this and throw it into my game. (laughs) But if you don't, if Vecna is not a big part of your world, like and there's a lot of a lot of people who who listen to us. You guys are running new games. You might it's it's a lot to throw Vecna in. And just be like, oh, yeah, Nothics are connected to Vecna, and they're trying to absorb knowledge. And your player's are like, what's a Vecna? Who's a Vecna? Is that like, do I have to go kill that now? <laughs> so I'm yeah. trying to think of how you tie that in. But Well, you don't have to necessarily – here's the thing. This is a foolproof plan from the perspective of the monster because we don't have to have this Nothic connected to Vecna. True. All we have to have is the Nothic connected to – I just like that flavor idea. Yeah. I just like the idea of like – if you have this i this this overarching villain of of Vecna watching over your players, it's an interesting aspect to use um, the these like um, essentially minions of Nothics that are like watching over them. Here's how I envision the battlefield, by the way. Yeah, and it, I think this is me Paint sort of playing around with it. Paint it. So we've got a large field, right? And then we have uh-huh. like a graveyard near that near that field. It's very scorched earth uh-huh. uh n- it seems like nothing has been able to grow here for years yep, lots of uh, mud bones. and like trampled trampled ground mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. trampled ground uh sort of hills mounds mm-hmm. massive holes in the ground bodies uh, light, strewn about just all rotting away um and then a small graveyard nearby as well with a uh, with a, a temple directly in the middle of it mm-hmm. and that was what was the defending forces side and the attacking force was coming to get into that location specifically. Mm -hmm. And then getting into that location, the eye of Vecna is where it resided. And that's where the wizard essentially used this force to get through. Lots of people died to gain the power of the eye of Vecna, not Mm -hmm. realizing the curse would then draw him to become the Nothic itself in a constant. And then now this Nothic, with no direction whatsoever, acts as a um, as a sentry um, for Vecna. Or if we're not using Vecna, 
is just trying to figure out why it's here. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't really understand why it's here. And so it's utilizing, it's trying to put together the pieces of, of, of the, uh, of the secrets of the dead to then lead itself back up to where it is right now. Um, and ultimately, you know, what I think would be really cool is that if, if it then showed the players, these secrets and each time during one of the secrets, you sprinkle in a little bit of like, secret. sorry, the wizard keep saying that (laughs) secret, secret, you you speak secret, secrets are no fun. Secret, secrets hurt someone. Um, but you sprinkle in the secrets of like, oh, look, there's a wizard in this scene or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, he, and he could be like, how is the battlefield looking? Or she could be like, this is where we need to go or this is what we need to do, whomever. Um, and then f- each time that you move on, you start to see the gradual growth towards uh, those things, like like towards the Nothic itself. And then once you visualize the Nothic, once the Nothic is actually visibly seen by the players, mm-hmm. he'll be or it will be adorned by the robes of the wizard before, mm-hmm. but also have some of those other features. That is that sort of like I've got. I just think that that's creepy and also no, gets us dude, a good little thing. I think it's a good idea, and you spark some inspiration mm-hmm. for me. So now let me piggyback off of your idea, and then you can take over from there. <laughs> Sorry, I said p- p- piggyback really weird. I kind of stuttered a little bit. So I, just, I, I just decided to I'm stick with it. <laughs> Okay. I'm gonna pick up my old coffee bag. Maybe you're right, sent here because, um, it, years ago, for whatever reason, I, I don't know the reason why no one's gone and collected these things. Um, but mm-hmm. maybe you're specifically being sent because there was a wizard who was involved in this fight, who knew some sort of knowledge that you needed. Like there was some sort of knowledge that that he had that now your players need for quest. Um, for for your whatever, or for whatever side quest, or somebody else needs it and they're sending you to go find it, whatever. That's how you get to the battlefield. Um, When you're there, you are are looking for information on this wizard. You're combing through the battlefield, you're combing through the bones, you're trying to pick pick at what's left, because, I mean, this battlefield would have been picked clean by robber barons, by bandits, by, you know, uh, carrion eaters whatever um and as you're going through maybe there's i could see this being actually a really fun little quest for an early level party um yeah this wizard hires you and it's like hey i don't have time to go do this i i'm trying to conduct this research and i need some information that this old wizard used to have but the battle that he died in this was centuries ago and he was chasing after this knowledge and he got pulled into the war and and he died. Maybe you're even saying like he was looking into phylacteries. Like that's the research he was looking into. And to take down another lich, uh, we need to figure out how phylacteries work. He did a lot of research on it. A lot of people necessarily weren't happy that he was. A lot of people had questions as to why he was looking into it, but he did. Um, go to this battlefield, see what you can find. Uh, here's a few leads also, and you get there, and maybe it's a it's a weird version of a fetch quest where you get to this battlefield and the Nothic sees you there and he's stealing information from you and he's doing the whole thing where you walk up to a pile of bones and you just hear this this moaning cry in the back of your mind you hear the clanging of metal and of steel against each other and he starts to you start to hear him say like you hear the sound of him getting hit and he falls down in your mind you hear like I wasn't good enough I wasn't strong enough I'll never get to see my family again. And then if it's like your player's character who like is also separated from their family and, and trying to find a family member. And then you just have like, you have the voice say, and and, you, and you're going to die right like me too. You, you'll never see your family again. You're going to, you're going to be dead in a, in a, in a war zone one day and, and you'll never see them again. Just like stuff like that. And your player's like, what, what, what's going on? You have these different little encounters, whatever. Um, mm-hmm. And then maybe, because this Nothic also, it has the the the, the monster manual says it has this insatiable desire to know who it once was. It doesn't even know why, but it wants to know um, for whatever reason. Maybe the amount of research it's done into phylacteries, it casted some spell on itself and it transformed and it went wrong and now it's a Nothic. So he starts to give you pieces of information to lead you 
to where the different items that once belonged to him were or are. And your players could just find him also, but that's not fun. So maybe he says, like, maybe you walk up to another body and you hear another memory because they're at this point, maybe they learn the fact that they can hear these things, memories, these these old soldiers' memories. And you hear somebody say, um, what, what are those, what are they doing? Uh, and, it, the, and the person's like, it's almost like a, a soldier that was kind of dying. And this is a few days later. And you hear it talk about how go goblins picking through the corpses, uh, take, taking taking our, our, our stuff and whatever. And so you're like, oh, there's goblins nearby. We need to go kill those goblins. And boom, we killed the goblins. And wow, look, we found this old like insignia that once belonged to this Ooh, guy. Ooh, that's a great idea, mm -hmm. dude. And then there's another thing that's where it's like idea. there's some gnolls who came through – uh, not gnolls, uh, some ghouls that came through and were eating corpses, and maybe you find another few bodies in the wood that are woods that were killed, and these guys are bandits now, and they're like, "Ha, we got some good loot off of uh, off of that battlefield. Those suckers fighting for a war. That blah 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 blah. Oh crap, what's that a ghoul? Oh, it killed me. Oh no, it's eating me and taking me back to this cave over <laughs> here. Oh, uh. oh no." <laughs> I should probably write down exactly where it's taking my dead body. <laughs> Hold on one second. Stop chewing. Okay. Um. Right over here. But yeah, so the Nothic's <laughs> leading you to the pieces of who it once was, as it's also collecting yeah, information. Yeah, it's like a subliminal, like, it's like the wizards fighting through this curse and saying, like, help me. Yeah. Please. Yeah, yep. I love that idea. Yep. Um, that's really cool. And then okay, I so think then the timeline has to shrink a lot, by the way. Oh, yeah. Well, I think if yeah. you wanted to, you could turn this into a cool little multi-session thing to introduce some people to D and D. I think it has, it has all, it has the all the right ingredients for a good intro D and D session. You're gonna have combat. Yeah, it, it you actually. Have some yeah, the goblins. You don't care about them. We're killing them. The the ghouls. Boom. We don't care about them. We're killing them. That's combat. But at the same time, you've got this great NPC plot driver, this Nothic who, as you're walking around, is like literally, like you said, whispering in the back of your minds. Like I even like that effect you did, where it's like like that kind of stuff yeah so you you hear it and you're thinking like what the heck is this and then at the end ba -ba -da -ba, you get the you pull the mask off the creature and this nothic appears and you just kind of see it you see its eye open up in the back of this cave and it's dark and you see this big glowing eye and you hear it say i need i need those i, I need those like, and he's just like, you're like, what, you need these items? He's like, yes. And either you fight him and he tries to take them from you or you bargain with him and you figure out that he's the wizard who these items mm -hmm. belong to. Um, yeah. But I think that could be. I like the fact that it's in a church, by the way. I think oh, that'd yeah. be really, really cool. A bunch of candles lit acro across a bunch of pews. Mm -hmm. um, I think that'd be a really fun fight. And as it like sits behind the altar at the front of the church uh, and then it's just like pokes its head over the side. Uh and like maybe it's like covered in a robe, like a large robe that covers its entire body, mm -hmm. and then you see with scaly nailed fingers come over, reach over the top of the altar, and then an eye glows from beneath the robe itself. Mm -hmm. That yeah, that's and the Nothics, a, that's awesome. I think it's motivation too, because you're being sent to collect this Nothic's research. The Nothic, for some reason, is drawn to the items that you're collecting. And it also, through its knowledge gathering abilities, knows that you're here to do that, as well as some other mm -hmm. things about you. And it doesn't know why it also wants these items, but it does. So its dual role is to lead you to the items so that you can kill the monsters that it can't. And then, once you get the items, it wants to demotivate you to the point that you give up and you drop the items. Whether it's, it's saying that there's some kind of curse on them, whether it's saying – so it wants you to both fetch the items and then to, for some reason, like give up or quit or or confuse Ten you. Ten seconds point. left in the fourth quarter. Rich takes the ball down the right side of the lane. <laughs> he shoots up the three. He drains it. He wins the championship. He's the best shot I've ever seen in my entire life. But, yeah, so that's, that's just a – That's a really – no, this is a great, good, tightly packaged – first adventure for a party mm -hmm. you could do it in one or two sessions mm -hmm. it's it gives you the mystery and magic of D, D. it gives you the basic baseline combat it gives you that good dreary feeling of like death and decay the worldliness um, too that's supernaturalness yeah. where it's not just i've got a sword and i'm casting fireball i'm magic yeah. like you're walking around no, this battlefield yeah. and you're hearing you step up to a 
And you could even pitch this idea that, like, for some reason, it's said that these woods have been haunted ever since this battle went on. Like, the battle was so fierce that it spread into the nearby town. It spread into the nearby church. When people retreated, the army was ruthless. The army, like, didn't give up, and it, it killed everyone. And now it's said that the woods are cursed and haunted. And really, it's just this Nothic, but no one's seen him. Hey, let's give a let's give a magic item with this one, too. Like, a oh, little yeah. fun, cool magic item. Um... I don't I mean the, I, like I the put eye us on the spot Vecna. right there. <laughs> Just a little uh, yeah. <laughs> Just give a level two a level two party the eye of Vecna. <laughs> Go out there and be somebody. Yeah, you get it. <laughs> um what about the oh, wand but... of magic missiles? It's just an, yeah, un- it's an uncommon. I mean, uh this wand for, I think, uh, again, for an early level. What about part. like Go a ahead. what about the what about like this? Go ahead. And this is gonna be a created a custom a custom item. Oh, okay. Okay. The um, as as the players either defeat or bring the Nothic the items, the wizard is able to sort of manifest itself through the art of illusion mm-hmm. and say like "Thank you for freeing me mm-hmm. from this 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 bond." And either way, the either the Nothic dies or he dissipates and like fades magically away. Mm-hmm. The only thing left. Is the Nothic's eye, the eyeball itself, mm-hmm. um, and maybe like a bone off of its back that's like stuck into the eyeball itself. And this could be the Wand of Telepathy or the Wand of Secrets or something like that. There is like a, there's a Helmet of Telepathy, I think. Yeah, so we just repurpose, we just re, refill it, we reflavor for this one. But dude, so you're saying that this wizard, I like that idea too, that this wizard has, because once again, this wizard we're saying was looking into how to make a phylactery, which is how to trap mm-hmm. your soul in in an object so that if you die, your soul can re-manifest. Essentially, that's, that's mm-hmm. the gist of it. So what if this wizard got like a half success? What if like part of his soul was maintained? Um Ooh, okay. I like. And then by bringing those items to him, he then commands the uh, the party to destroy those items, in turn destroying himself. But I think to release himself. But I think what if? Hmm. I like the idea of of the answer to that being yes, but him having unsuccessfully trapped his whole self in the phylactery, and that's where the mm-hmm. Nothic came from. The Nothic is his drive, it's his desire, it's his want, it's his cravings, it's his his very... But the rest of him is stuck in those other phylacteries? His thoughts and his, his more mechanical... Um, it, it's almost like you have... So you have in this object all of his insight, all of his knowledge, all of this wisdom, but, but for what purpose? He has no emotion anymore. Mm-hmm. So he just has this knowledge... But he he doesn't necessarily even want to live because he's just there. He doesn't feel anything anymore. So he that part of him wants set free if it if it has any emotion at all. And the Nothic is his it doesn't have any remembrance of who it was. It just has this want. It just has this desire. It just has these cravings right. that continue to collect. Um, and so the closer that those phylacteries get to this Nothic, the more present the wizard becomes within the Nothic itself. Exactly. Keep, okay. I love that. Dude, this is such a. I, I mean, I'm I'm like screaming out loud about how great the thing that we just created was, um, but you know I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm a self a partial, you know? a psychopath. Partial. So I, I just I I really like this this entry adventure. This would be so fun mm-hmm. because it ticks all the boxes for like each of the types of players you can get. You're gonna get the type of player that wants the mystery and the excitement. Of oh the... yeah, the type of player that's gonna lean then... down on the battlefield when they hear a skeleton talking to them and and ask it questions. And the Nothic's yes, gonna be I... like, "Oh, I will tell you all day stuff." Yeah, exactly. And then you're gonna have the players that are like, "Cool, we get to go kick some goblins' asses mm-hmm. or go fight some ghouls and do some fun stuff like that." Yep. Then you have like. The quintessential ending where you can end up in this singular location. Um, it's, I mean, obviously, Dude. everything has a bit of railroading in it. I don't really care what anybody says oh, yeah. about that, but it's how well um, you flavor the rails. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I had to loop de loop to your railroad, and everybody's going to be happy. So, <laughs> but even uh, like um, at the end, having this choice between, I think if we give it, yeah. if we give it that magic item, I think mm-hmm. it's you either take this this these phylacteries that te- that technically have a part of a soul in them, and you return them to this one wizard so he can do quest. Or this this wizard who's in the phylacteries is saying, "Hey, if you destroy me right now, I don't know how this affects the Nothic. I think the Nothic is disconnected, besides the fact that he wants these items together for some unknown reason. Um, right. I think the Nothic which plays directly into the monsters. And I think the Nothic wants to keep these items. He doesn't care about who he used to be. He just wants them. He just craves them. Um, right. But so you you fight him or you scare him off or whatever. But I think." This other wizard is like, if you set me free, I know where this other, I know where this old me, this Nothic, I know where he's kept some magical items. And if you free me, I'll tell you where. Like, I'll tell you where they are. Um, And especially sleazy players or clever players or whatever could have a both and. Yeah, sure. I'll tell you. We'll set you free. But you tell us where the items are. Ha ha, sucker. We're going to do both. Ha 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 ha. But I think the hope is you kind of play on those empathy, empathy. Lines were like, oh, hmm. shoot, what are we going to – because this guy is not technically a person anymore. He even maybe says he's not a person anymore, but he still just wants oh, – he wants All to I done. say is this. If 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 you're going to have a player that does that, mm-hmm. then then the anger of the wizard that, that resides in those phylacteries, Ooh. that it that just powers up the yes. Nothic even more. Yes. And, and just makes him an angry, badass. He's got these like, red Nothic. veins that go through him, and they start to grow incredibly bright, mm-hmm. and his eye gets even yeah. brighter. Maybe he even grows, and he hears some cracking, and the, the bones in his back shoot out even more. Cam! Yeah. Oh, that's last case. That's best case scenario for me. Cam. I hope that you're a scumbag. You're over here <laughs> saying that I'm going down the sidelines and putting up a three, but that's a, that's a home run point right there, sir. That's a touch point. Man. That's one good touch Ooh. point right there. Oh, man. <laughs> if this oh, is a God, baseball game, sports... I'd say you got a whole score. One whole score. <laughs> <laughs> good job. <laughs> you got to bump, set, and spike that hockey puck. You're the M- you know? you're the most valuable athlete. That's for sure. <laughs> mm-hmm. The MVA, as they all say. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh boy! I hope oh, that was gonna... I hope that was painful for everyone else as much as it was for you. See, that's what I want to know. Actually, mm-hmm. is like how how deep in the world of sports is I? I, I want to know. Hey, can, let me ask you this: okay. If anybody is still listening at this point, am I alone in this D and D world as being a giant sports fan, or do I got people out there with me? That's all I got to know about. this. Oh, my first D and D group, um, Ned. Hey. Ned, if you're listening, I love you, man. Yeah, I got that text. We should play rock band um, until we hang out sometime. I'm answering a text over a podcast because it's the 21st century, and that conceded. Yeah. Um, but yeah. my first D&D group, they were all huge into sports, um, except for okay. like me. Uh, I was I'm ki- I kind of follow Indians baseball a little bit, but yeah. Cam, I don't think you're you. alone. I don't think you're alone. Okay. Okay, well, that's good to know. So back to the story, though. Um, yeah, so we've got a good three-way branch where you can – give the you can set the wizard free Mm -hmm. you can give the stuff back to the nothic Mm -hmm. or you can trick the wizard into finding the the magical parts and give the stuff back to the nothic which causes like an awesome crazy scary hopefully some player death and maybe uh, if you give the items to the nothic maybe the nothic has the wizard's spell book uh which isn't a phylactery but still has the research in it um, so you have three ways Boom. of completing the quest that all have very different flavor and let your players feel like they made the decision they wanted to make. I love the creepiness of this 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 one as well. Mm-hmm. And I, I know that people out there that listen, they y'all enjoy the creepiness. We I mean, got that some was a creep. part of the We got some fans who enjoy some, the creep. You got some lying creepers. That's what they are. <laughs> lie lie to us on the on the Discord. The Discord's now yeah, empty. Creepers. Everyone's like, I'm mm-hmm. done with this. Yeah. No more riddles Everybody's for you. Like, <laughs> Everybody's like, y'all are doing a great job. We enjoy your show. Blah, 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 blah. Liars and you like creepy stuff. I'm just saying. I'm calling it. Remember last week when we were enjoying grilled cheese memes with our fans and now we're Mm -hmm. calling them creeps? Uh, Mm -hmm. Man, I – I'm going to take you guys down a notch or two. All right? That's what us DMs, we need every once in a while. We need someone to just take our knees out and just like – Bring us that back down to earth so we don't think that we're gods. I used to always say, Cam, you were the favorite and I think – I think I just became the favorite. I think I just. Oh, that's fine. I think I think I just. I'm a got heel. There. I'm a heel. I'm a bad guy. I'm a natural bad guy. I can do this stuff all day. Um, um, I, all joking aside, though. With that being said, I think I think this is a good 
story. So, yes, I, I that think that was especially good. Whatever that. Have you ever heard that adjective? Spell it. That's all I gotta say about uh, that. Bl- um, bl- 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 okay, but, but, I, but I agree. Bl- 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 I think this is good. I think it's fun. I think if you're looking for something to run with new players, uh, like you said, Cam, it's got everything there. Um, you can add your mm-hmm. own personality to this Nothic and and to this battlefield. But I would I would say for me, there's got to be a fog. There's got to be some ghouls. There's got to be some something mm-hmm. nearby or some bandits nearby that took this old equipment. And I think the best that you can really play off the idea that this place is quote unquote haunted. And that any you walk up to shoot the Nothic, you could walk up to a little bump in the ground, and all of a sudden the Nothic's like, "Help me, help! I'm buried here. I'm not dead. Help, help! I won't get a chance to do this." And the, the player's like, "Hey, who are you? Are you like what? What? What's? What can you tell us about our quest?" And the Nothic's just constantly trying to lead you to the items I want you to get. Very nice. good, much good, much great. I like Quest. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, I'll do a quick summary. Okay, and then um, it's your turn for the uh, synopsis. Okay. Uh, okay. I know we did the we did the double team last time. That's up to you. Whatever we want to do. Okay. Um, okay. To summarize, essentially, there is a small town that has been dealing with some significant issues or minor issues or whatever it may be. But a quest giver in the town says, "Hey, listen up." If you want to learn more about this, there was a wizard that used to live here that uh, vanished after a large battle outside over by the the graveyard. Um, But just be cautious. It's a haunted area. And the NPC says that. And then um, you essentially take your party out to this battlefield. And during this time, the battlefield begins to speak to the players through the bodies of the dead. Um, Through these conversations and secrets told and secrets earned uh the players learn of specific items that this monster is looking for to be brought to the local chapel uh the players find a a book that's on a set of goblins that had been raiding the battlefield itself the um the the players find a red gold necklace like a blood covered necklace or something like that uh from these ghouls that have uh, that killed some bandits that were um that had been like sort of pillaging the the battle scene itself once they've collected all these items the the nothic uh, or as as the dms as we know the nothic will lead them to the chapel at which time your players have opportunities to do a litany of things with this nothic to determine the course of actions uh for the rest of the story uh it's a nice quick fun Maybe single night, maybe two nights. A uh, little story gives you some really great seeds to plant for players that you might hook uh, by playing this. This is a great introductory game for new players as well. It gives everybody sort of the the whole gamut of what makes D and D great. So, um, with that being said, uh, Rich. Okay. Uh, you so your players, uh, your players eventually make their way and find the old battleground. Uh, a, a thick mist sits like a like a carpet uh, over the surrounding forest and battlegrounds, and the, the the footing that you walk on is is rocky and muddy. Uh, for some reason, the land just seems still cursed. As you walk out into the middle of the battlefield, you, you trip over uh, a rib cage sticking up out of the ground, a, 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 a still holding on to a crude, rusted iron sword. And then all of a sudden, as you as you look, you see one body laying. Um, Kind of the skull open, and as it looks, as you look down at it, you hear in the back of your mind the sound of of a battlefield taking place, the clanging of metal, the shouts of soldiers, and then all of a sudden you hear you hear a conversation. You hear, uh, "We we can't we can't win. We have to we have to run." And then you look over. You, you're just pulled over. On your vision goes to the right. You see another another. A body a little ways off with a few arrows sticking out of its chest. We we have to get to the church. We have to get to the church. And you, you look over to the left, you see another body that's laying face down with a old spear hilt uh, stabbed through it. It says, "Where's where's that wizard? Where's he gone? We we need we need his help." And you look around and you begin to hear just these different soldiers shout out these different uh, things about about needing this wizard, about how he's disappeared, about how this battle's going south, and and you begin to pick up little plots about how some soldiers ran over here, some retreated over there. Uh, and your players are left with the decision, where do we go? Um, what do we do? And, and how can we hear these voices? That's what I got. Yeah. Pretty okay? Pretty- um, 
That was amazing. You're amazing, Cam. I'm blown away. You... Uh, by the way, they can hear voices because of Boost Mobile's headset. This episode was brought to you by Boost Mobile. <laughs> Boost Mobile, the Nothic's best way to call. Um, oh, that's so good. That's so good. I just think I just really do think it's like a good episode. Just right there. Yeah, you know exactly. It's not. It's not like a. Yeah. It's not some long, strung out campaign with a big bad evil guy. It's just a nice little. A strung together story with a nice little conclusion at the end and some good combats and a nice creepy overtone. I, I think it'll be And good. like I said, and it still can give you the aspects of um the aspects of, of laying crumbs for further adventures down the line. Yes. Yep. If you want this to could fall Rebecca directly or like if glitched them or anything like that. You could honestly plug this into Lost Minds of Fandela Fandelver and probably have a better time. That's much better time. Because honestly I mean, would you rather go with the writers of Wizards of the Coast or two dudes on the internet? That's all I'm, uh, I's all I'm going to say. Uh, two about dudes that, on the so. internet. <laughs> yeah, that's all I got to say. Uh, with that being said, um, you can find us, everybody, at Filling in the Gaps in most of the little places like Reddit. You can go find us over there. Mm-hmm. We don't do a lot of posting on Reddit anymore uh, because I'm lazy. Um, <laughs> you can find us on Twitter uh, and reach out to us there. We share most of our episodes. We don't do a lot of the social medias now that I think about it. We do, however, talk on our Discord, and that place is hopping mm-hmm. with riddles and paintings and not liars. I was just kidding the whole time. Look at that. Sandwiches. Face turn. Debates over mm-hmm. mayonnaise oh. or butter. Um, just lots of... Mm- we ask the hard-hitting Dis- questions on our Discord. We do talk about the hard-hitting stuff. And every once in a while, we talk about DMing stuff and give out ideas get, and and receive ideas and um, all kinds of fun stuff like that. We also uh, have a lot of our friends from other podcasts in there as well. So if you want to talk directly with DMs uh, from other podcasts that you enjoy, you're more than welcome to do so. They're there uh, to share and to listen as well. So and that's our also, probably our speaking, favorite spot is Discord. Speaking of friends who are also have podcasts uh if you guys want to hear more of our shenanigans uh me and cameron we actually got asked to uh guest star in a in an actual D D podcast um not not just two guys talking about whatever they feel like but an actual uh what, what, what do, i don't even know what you call it it's my i'm so new to well, it well it's it's not D D. it's actually a, a, a d6 system called mask mm-hmm. by uh, by power to the by Powered by the apocalypse. Um, but yeah, Cameron from the Coventry podcast invited me, Rich, and uh, Adam from the Roaring Trainers over to uh, uh, to film, not film, record, record a show. Um, of superheroes. About, yeah, yeah, some teenage superheroes and, so and dealing cool. with angst and emotion. And we've we've wrapped on recording already. Uh, we Episode three is already released, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Yep. And uh, we have two episodes left to go in that arc. It's a lot of fun. We've heard some pretty good reception from it as well. And we're just really excited for Cameron because he's an awesome DM. He really is. And we had a ton of fun. Mm -hmm. We had a ton of fun. You know, so. Yeah, it was a blast. um, um, yeah, go check it out. Go, Coventry Podcast. Yeah, go check it out. Uh, tell them that that you got you got you, we sent you. I'm really stuttering here at the end. Uh, tell them that we <laughs> sent you. <laughs> and also, uh, in case you guys hadn't uh, hadn't heard, I, I'm not sure if we told everybody or not. But uh, for a little while, uh, Cameron and I are going to go ahead and be posting. Uh, Filling in the Gaps episodes, not every week, but every other week. Uh, we've just got some other stuff that we were working on, and life's been getting kind of busy. Uh, we're, we don't want to go away, though. We don't want Filling in the Gaps to be something that, that falls off the radar. So we might, every once in a while, do – Cameron might do a solo episode. I might do a solo episode. We might do something else that's, that's kind of fun and interesting. But for a while, you can expect us every other week, still on Mondays, uh, bringing you some fun and fresh ideas. Uh, if there's anything else that you guys would like to see, like, let us know on Discord uh, if there's any solo episode ideas that you guys would have for things you want to hear us talk about. Just let us know. But other than that, we wanted to say thank you so much. You guys are the best group of listeners out there ever. If you're new, I'm talking about you too. That's right. I don't even know you yet, but you're yeah. the best. You're the best. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, if, and if you're at the gym right now listening to this, you know what? You're the best. Yeah. Give, give me 10 yeah, more reps. Up. Hey, give me one more rep. All right, here we go. Yeah. One. Yeah. Two. Come on. Three. Uh huh. Okay. No, 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 no. You, Four nah, more. Th- this is all you. Uh-huh. This is all you. Uh-huh. I'm not even touching yep. it. I'm not even lifting nope, it right it's now. all you. Come on. Okay, push, push through. through. Push, push through the bottom rep. There it is. There it is. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Yeah. yeah.